Welcome, Dr. Ingina Tinna. Uh, thanks for being part of this uh, interview on behalf of Team Maru team. And very many congratulations on your AML rank one. So that one stands like a crown. Like, though there are rank two, three who will be your neonatology colleagues, the one is irreplaceable. So very happy to meet you here. I'm Dr. Sutra. I'm a neonatologist. I'm an alumni of PJI and I'm a Maru faculty for SS Neonatology. So uh, first of all, I would love to uh, know about you. Introduce yourself. So we know where you're from, uh, where you did your MBBS, PG, and uh, uh, is this your first attempt with uh, INASs or uh, uh, you have done it before also? Please let us know what, uh, know about you. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm highly obliged to give this interview to you. Uh, I am from Bikane, Rajasthan. I did my undergraduation from Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi, after which I did my post-graduation from PGI Chandigarh, happened to be your junior. And then uh, I completed my uh, PG in December 2023. I gave an INA attempt in 2023, but that was a half-hearted attempt because I was still confused between uh, cardiology versus neonatology. So I was still figuring out where I actually want to pursue, what I want to pursue future in, in future in life. Uh, this was my full head and hearted attempt uh, in April. Okay, so uh, you are the uh, colleague Dr. Rick was mentioning about. Yes, ma'am. If he had, I have not seen the video, but yes, I am with him. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, Dr. Inha, uh, uh, everyone would want to know how you went through your preparations. Like uh, after your post graduations, you were sitting and uh, studying, or the preparations were happening through your post graduation period itself. So, how did you go about it? When did you decide that you want to give an INASS exam? And when did you start preparing? Uh, Ma'am, I would uh, say that it was a long process. The actual journey started when I joined my post graduation because the building blocks were built then only. When I was doing uh, the first year, I was building up the initial uh, basic concepts of my post uh, of my pediatric subject. Then in the second year, I was posted in neonatology. In PGI, we have multiple postings in neonatology in which I got an interest into uh, neonatology then. And then a full-fledged uh, preparation actually began in January only when I had made up my mind that I want to give INISS and I want to pursue neonatology uh, in future in my life. Before that, it was more of a preparation for my MD pediatrics and general pediatrics, other systemic pediatrics, and uh, for my university exams, not per se for neonatology alone. Uh, so when you started thinking about this INASS exam, so how did you start with? You started revising what you had read during your neonatology period because PJ has a separate protocol. You would have made notes. You would have read your textbooks. Or you actually started it started afresh by taking a different set of books, doing question banks. How did you go about the preparation? So my, my basic resources for preparation, looking at the previous year questions that were being asked in INI work from AIMS protocol. So I made a point that my basic resource would be AIMS protocol. Uh, and then it was added up by uh, our, uh, our protocol from PGI, then from Cloherty and from Nelson as well. But since uh, AIMS protocol has a very good base, uh, gives us a very good base when we are giving the exam. So I made sure that I'm very thorough with that book. So when I started preparing, I used to read AIMS protocol. I used to add the concepts from Cloherty, from Nelson, and from PGI. And I used to add it to my book itself so that at the end, I have one common resource at which I have to look through before giving the exam. Till March, I had done all of the books thoroughly. I had compiled everything in my AIMS protocol. And from March till April, it was only AIMS protocol and my own main notes. Okay, so you were, were you doing a uh, lot of question banks when we are doing it? So uh, again, a suggestion for the uh, uh, aspirants, like you read a chapter and you go back and do MCQs on the chapter, or you do a, a set of MCQs and when you have doubt, you go back and refer your uh, source material. Uh, what is your style of preparing? So ma'am, uh, this time I uh, had actually opted for looking at the previous year question. I used to ask a lot of seniors who have been through this phase, who have given this exam, who knew what were the important topics. I used to ask them. I had made a, uh, notes of all the topics that actually were being asked frequently in the exam. 
and then i used to study those chapters those topics very thoroughly and this rule was applied not only for neonatology but also for general and other systemic pediatrics because we are very uh, scared of the general part as well as the systemic pediatrics part when we sit for nis knowing that anything can everything can be asked from nelson so i uh, and i had a crunch of time i could not read the whole of nelson in just 4 months i had read 30 to 40% of my nelson in my md days but the rest i could not read very thoroughly so i made sure that i go through the previous year questions whatever source i had for that i used to ask my seniors and then i used to focus on those topics more uh, uh when it comes to uh, the two different exams one is ss neat and the inas uh, aspirants usually have an idea that for inas it is always ens protocols guidelines and everything and in, when it comes to ss neat it is always nelson questions are taken from nelson and the answer is reference back to nelson now the general pediatrics part of inas is it sourced from what do you think it is sourced from if the questions are from uh, nelson do you think nelson will be very important there or uh, uh, only the recent guidelines will do no ma'am nelson would play an important role because what i have seen is that they are fond of specific areas specific chapters or specific systems uh, and they would ask questions frequently from those systems so if we are thorough with those systems from nelson i think that creates a very good base for us and that actually helps us in uh, attempting the questions well uh, as far as i would uh, understand the aims exam or the ima exam they focus more on basics in terms of general pediatrics as well as other systemic pediatrics they don't go much uh, into the management or into the recent protocols for those topics they want you to know the recent protocols or the recent guidelines for neonatology per se but for the other part they focus more on the basics so if you have read nelson well if you have revised it well you can uh, good catch a good hold of those basic questions okay so uh where in the neonatology part of it this year where do you think the chunk of questions were coming from sometimes it will be respiratory system sometimes it will be nutrition uh, sometimes it will be long term development prognostication and everything so this year were you able to get an idea or grasp an idea where the questions were coming from yes ma'am so uh, they had questions from the antenatal part from the perinatal as well as the postnatal all the three areas were covered uh, in the postnatal uh, less of respiratory system more of the abdominal system was asked this time uh, in, which would include feeding which would include nec adf redf they are very fond of these areas even neonatal cholestasis so they had asked a lot of questions in this even in the oski in the second step when i had given my oski exam it was based majorly on the abdominal system gastrointestinal system so that was an area which was more focused uh, uh, in the exam this time uh, antenatal and perinatal was same as previous year questions as we have seen that they are fond of asking the antenatal assessments how do fetal how is fetal assessment done at what gestation it is done at what gestation what testing is done so they are focused uh, on these topics again Okay, and uh, apart from AIM, uh, AIMS protocols, Nelson and all, were you able to sense that some questions were uh, coming from some other part of like uh, the recent Cochrane reviews, uh, or uh, uh, Dr. Rick was mentioning about the NFH statistics, where coming questions were coming in through that. Uh, do you also uh, uh, have anything to add on to it? Like, no, you have to read this. Questions were coming from this also. Yes, ma'am. I would like to add on that NNF guidelines were being frequently asked uh, in uh, the first stage as well as in the second stage. They were focusing a lot on NNF guidelines, and they would ask direct questions from NNF guidelines. So either you know it, you give the answer, you score it, or else you don't know it and you lose the mark. So if you are very thorough with these NNF guidelines, especially the recent ones, the ones that are being updated now or that are being updated in last six months to one year. we are very fond of asking questions based on that so if we are thorough with that it gives us an extra edge okay how much of genetics uh, related questions have been asked this year because that is the uh, hot topic nowadays so were there any genetics were they asking about genes or the genetic testing methods were there questions on that no ma'am this time there were none of the question from genetic methods or the genes per se specifically no gene was asked but yes in previous years they have asked so they might repeat it we need to be thorough with that topic as well because they have asked it frequently in previous year uh, previous years so they can ask it in later years as well okay 
uh, anything else that you would uh, 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 want to share with your aspirants regarding solving MCQs, regarding being, being thorough with your text material, uh, anything else that you would have thought, right, I would want to share with this, my, uh, this with my juniors. So anything like that that you want to share here? Yes, ma'am. I would like to uh, first of all tell everybody that AIMS protocol is a must. So earlier, uh, what I got as a guidance from my seniors was Clohati was also a must. Like you should know Clohati line by line because AIMS protocol was not covering all the topics and a lot of topics were being covered in Clohati and we had to be thorough with that book as well. Now, what I felt during my preparation was a lot of topics have been actually covered in the new AIMS protocol. So if you are thorough with the AIMS protocol starting from the first page till the last, which includes the annexures as well, I would also like to focus here on annexures because they ask a lot of questions directly from the, those last few pages and that we frequently miss on reading. We just read the initial chapters and then we skip it. So it, uh, the questions are directly being asked from the last few five to ten pages. So if we are thorough with that, that also gives us an extra mark. Secondly, for Clohati, I would like to mention that all the topics need not be covered thoroughly from Clohati, but you need to have a concept. So you should know the pathophysiology. You should know the clinical features that gives you uh, that helps you in making a diagnosis. But the management part per se uh, is better given in AIMS protocol is also followed as per AIMS protocol in, as in the exam questions. So that can be covered up by AIMS protocol. Thirdly, for Nelson, I would specifically say that rather than reading the text, it would take a little extra time and you might not remember and recall it. You might get confused. So better would be to read, the, to go to the tables and go through the uh, images and the text that is given below the images. That covers a lot of part and that gives direct questions and direct answers as well. So these are the three uh, areas which I would, would, which I would like the students to actually focus on in a very a uh, specific manner, not to go haywire from one book to another, from another book to the third one, but to have an approach initially only while starting, which I also made sure that I have this approach. I don't go haywire and read everything because I knew I would not be able to remember. I might get confused as well. So I knew from which book what thing needs to be covered. AIMS protocol a must, Clohati for pathophysiology, clinical features, and Nelson for tables and images. Okay, uh, uh, one uh, doubt that we had while preparing the material also, like when you go back to Nelson, uh, sometimes Nelson would be outdated. The recent edition is almost three years old. So by the time our NRP guidelines, everything would have changed now, AIMS has also come with a new protocol. So uh, uh, in such scenarios, in questions relating, like for example, NRP question is asked, what do you think that we should stick to? Ma'am, the recent guidelines, any day recent guidelines or whatever is mentioned in AIMS protocol, the management part has to be followed through the recent guidelines or the AIMS protocol. Mostly the AIMS protocol, if it is updated, it has the recent guidelines mentioned in it. Uh, the previous guidelines will never be uh, considered as an answer. So we should focus okay. for management per se only on AIMS protocol. Whatever okay. is given as charts, whatever is given as texts in the AIMS protocol, uh, they should focus on that. Even if it is not given as a flowchart, I would like to mention that what I used to do was I used to make my own protocol. Looking at the text, I would make my own protocol step by step. That used to help me in attempting the question as well, because I knew at which step what has to be done next. Okay, that's great. That's great. So you have an algorithm for every condition. What you yes, do with uh, sure that, that will probably in your clinical practice also when you're managing a kid also you'll be very clear something to refer back early now uh this regarding this question it is almost like a conspiracy theory people will say no 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 they are putting this word only to confuse you no this is they will they, they will know that you will choose this answer that's why they have given a different answer also so uh is it so complicated or ains people are actually straightforward and they want to test your basics how did you feel about the questions and they're actually straightforward. We make it as complicated because we know it, an AIMS word is attached to it. So we just complicate things because of that word. It is actually very basic and very straightforward. So uh, one should make sure that don't complicate things in the exam. They should use their mind, get to the answer and then mark that answer. Yes, they should make sure that they rule out other options. That gives an extra confidence that you are at the right answer. 
but not to overthink about the question not to just label it that it is an aims question it might be complicated that is not true yeah that's what it, because people can't believe that it is so simple that it can be a such a straightforward answer yeah uh, uh question banks also you were able to find like there will be repeated topics nec means nec related questions will be repeating but were you able to see repeated questions also like the same question somebody had told me there were repeated questions also or they were just the topics from which the questions were coming Ma'am, not exactly the whole question was repeated, but yes, like if they're asking about NEC stage 2, then they're fond of asking about pneumatosis intestinalis. They're fond of asking about portal venous gas. They roam around those topics. So yes, even in NEC, they will be fond of a particular stage because that, that is where the step changes. That is where the uh, findings change. So they focus more on that, but not the whole question is repeated. But yes, you have to pick up these small things that where the concept is changing, where the protocol is changing, where the management would change, clinical features would change, they will ask a question on that. They are fond of asking questions on that area, but not the whole question as per se is repeated. Okay. Now, two personal questions. One thing I had asked is to Dr. Rick also, I wanted to know, like, uh, people are now, like, once you finish your MD, uh, uh, just like they did for MBBS or anything, people are taking a break. They are uh, at home for six to seven months. They think they are uh, uh, preparing. Uh, they say they are preparing for my SS exams and that they focus on the theoretical part alone. Uh, some people continue work. They do their post uh, uh, SR shape or something. They continue working and then they randomly go on. Uh, they continue reading also and they give their exams. Uh, which do you think or, or which did you follow? Which you think worked best for you? Uh, for me, I followed uh, the second one that uh, I actually wanted to work somewhere, but then uh, because of the time crunch, I did not. I had some issues because of which I had only two months in hand. That was March and April. I could not study well in my Jan and Feb. So I had only two months in hand. Had I had more time, like uh, I think if the students have six months or seven months in their hand, they can work somewhere because they have more amount of time. But if you have less amount of time, especially last two months of the preparation, you cannot compromise on uh, working somewhere because you have to be very thorough with each line of that book. You cannot miss even a single word of that book. They are asking questions from each and every line of the book. So for last two months, you need to revise AIMS protocol at least once, maybe twice if you can do it, thrice if uh, you're very good with reading it and your concepts are very clear. Then for the last two months, you have to be very rigorous. For initial part, like for four or five months before that, uh, one can go and work somewhere because that gives a practical aspect as well. And that helps us in making a concept that also helps us in general pediatrics part. Maybe we're not reading Nelson very thoroughly, but when we are seeing the case, we, uh, we build a concept in our head and that helps us later in the exam as well. Because when I was giving the exam, I could recall the patients that I had seen in my postings in PGI. And I could answer on the basis of that, that, okay, I have seen that patient, that patient had that clinical feature, that means this is the diagnosis. So I could reach at that point, just because I had seen that patient, I had a, an image of that patient in my head. So yes, working definitely helps, but last one to two months, I think would require a very rigorous hard work. So that time one has to devote to studying properly. Yeah, okay. Thanks for sharing that because a lot of aspirants are now feeling guilty. See, I was working. That is why uh, I have to take a break. Otherwise, I won't be able to prepare. Uh, this will boost some confidence into them. Like uh, till MBBS, you're a student. After MBBS, you're already a doctor. So a doctor's uh, practice is actually going to increase their knowledge only. So I think they shouldn't feel guilty. They should actually feel proud. They're working and they're studying and they're aspiring. Uh, thanks for really thanks for being with me here, uh, Dr. Ehina. And uh, again, a PJ junior, so I'm actually double double proud. Uh, thank you for being with us. I want to thank our PJ professors to show how many students and uh, these brilliant brains they have been inspiring to join neonatology. So it is such a blessed field. So thank you once again. Um, I would also like to introduce my parents to you. They were a big support because I had exactly. only two months in my hand and they were everything that uh, I could do everything because of I, them. I, I, I can imagine what moment it will be for, for you. I was to, uh, telling Ihna, like uh, that one is there, right? Rank one, rank one. <laughs> okay, uh, you should be very proud parents and she should be a very blessed daughter. 
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. So nice of you, and we are grateful that you have given the time to hear and encourage other students on this behalf. We'll be grateful. Yeah, yeah. Everybody would want to meet Ina now. Okay. To the faculty as well as the new people who are trying for the IMSS, they should get some points for the future competitions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So nice of you. We are grateful. Let's get ready, Ina. Meeting your parents also. Thank you so much, ma'am. It is actually for them because uh, two months nobody can do it if they are not there. Like I just used to be on my table the whole day. Your yeah. LA three years would have been because of them. Yeah, my entire life is because of them. Every time they have been a support system, be it in PGI, be it entering PGI, they have been there to every second thing phase of my life. Great, Ina. So uh, we'll meet as neonatology in some other forum sometime in next three years. Sure, it will be a pleasure to meet you someday. So thank you once again.